Hey there, friends. I hope that you are having a happy Saturday. Y'all remember to spring forward tonight. We get a bit of a, we get an hour less of sleep, but oh my goodness, we get an hour more of daylight. And isn't that a pleasant thought that the next season rolling around is going to be spring? That just makes me happy. We're revisiting a couple of our favorite fabrics. And this is about the end of Miss Peacock. There's not a lot of Miss Peacock fabric left. We sure have had a delightful time with Miss Peacock. Um, I was really happy to hear that Miss Peacock bought a little luck to someone, um, bought a little happy to someone on a happy day. So that made me really feel good. I'm glad that Miss Peacock could make you happy. So let's take a look inside. The spine on this book is finished with cut glass beads, and I, I did very much like these. Uh, I don't know what that is, but it reminded me of the Hundred Eyes of Argus. Uh, you know, that uh, the peacock, that's where the peacock gets her hundred eyes on her feathers, or even more. I often wonder how many... You know, how many, how many feathers does that peacock have? <laughs> how many eyes does that peacock have? So let's take a look inside. Um, this is, this closure is a wee bit tricky, y'all. It's, it was just so pretty. It's a filigree flower with a pearl in the middle, and I thought it just lended a lot of elegance, you know, to, to Miss Peacock here. I thought it made her just look super pretty. I think we've got some light issues here, y'all. Can you see okay? Okay. I'll twist around my light just a little bit. There we go. I think that's better. So inside the journal, we are starting, of course, with your story. And what is your story? Remember that your story doesn't really have to be about what has happened, but what is going to happen, or what you feel like should have happened. <laughs> the story of your, um, the story of your existence, the story of your life, the story of where you want to go or who you want to be. Your story is anything that you want it to be. We've got some pretty golden feathers right here for you. I really do like to start these books off with a splash of color. Here's something for you to paint or draw or color. I love this paper. Um, those are peonies and you guys know how much I love my peonies. Mine are coming up. I went out yesterday to kind of check them out and they're, I'll have to take a picture and show you guys. They're like super red and really tiny um, pushing up through the soil. They sure are quite beautiful. This is a magazine page to inspire you, and what do you know? There's a peacock on it. Lucky us. Uh, this is, let's see, what little bird is this? This is, hold on. I love these, uh, these bird pages that are actually plates from library books. A black-billed cuckoo. I like that. Very pretty bird. Something else that's just really pretty, you know, we're thinking about spring wreaths now. My neighbor down the street always has this giant, enormous, beautiful wreath on her door. Um, this is a fall wreath, but I thought it was very pretty and it kind of matched our little cuckoo over here. Papers for you to play with. I like this plant, y'all. It's a glory bower. Um, Clarodendrum. Clarodendrum. Um, the Glory Bower or Bleeding Heart Vine is a spectacular vine of grand proportions that needs pruning to keep it within household bounds, but not much more than bright light to keep it flowering year-round. Hmm, it's really pretty, a very pretty plant. I don't think I've ever, ever seen one of those. I would like to get one because it's obvious that it doesn't take a whole lot of care. <laughs> Oh, here's a pretty piece of paper for you to write on, maybe to send somebody a little love note. A little cuckoo. More bird elements for you to play with. Uh, magazine pages and what do you know, we found another peacock. It was just like peacock stuff was just flying in, y'all. And uh, it always amazes me how when I start making my books, um, Really, they're our books because people send me things all the time, and it really does become 
co-creation because without your elements I couldn't create the books and we couldn't make other people happy so these are pretty much our journals y'all but it's very odd how when I work on one it seems like you know we know the blue beads story right you know I needed blue beads needed blue beads needed blue beads and boom the doorbell rang and Miss Gale had sent some blue beads and this was like a five minute thing not not like the, oh in the next day or so Miss Gale sent blue beads she sent blue beads that day the day the hour the minute I needed them <laughs> that's amazing isn't it uh, we got a peacock right here for you Peacock's kind of art deco too. Have y'all ever noticed that? A napkin for you to play with. It says cafe. The art of coffee. As with art, tis prepared, so one should drink it with art. An Arabian proverb. I like that. The art of art, the glory of expression, and the sunshine of the light of letters is simplicity. Walt Whitman. Uh, this one says it's coffee o'clock. Thank goodness. It's always coffee o'clock. This is a sweet little photo from the 1988 Colonial Homes magazine of ladies preparing coffee for dinner. And I just think, look at that coffee pot. That, that is really remarkable. My uncle is the potter Michael Sherrill. And Michael started out his very illustrious career making teapots and it's really incredible. His older teapots are like in the Mint Museum in Charlotte. Um, he has a piece in the Blue Room in the White House. So Uncle Mike just really, really, I mean, he was a very, um, he is an, uh, an, a craftsman of just, I esteem him very highly. He is really remarkable. And of course, he's the most humble, sweet person in the whole wide world. Um, Here's some Tim Holtz vellum for us. Some lovely things to just look at and yummy over. We've got a little bit of pasta sauce, some olive oil. You know, if we're thinking about coffee, we're thinking about things to eat with coffee, of course. Great American Recipes is about, I believe this is about using crock pot. I know that a lot of you will have friends and family over for Easter and you might be using a crock pot yourself. When we talk about food, you know, we always kind of really do like to pull in the element of the 1942 Red Cross Nursing Manual. And this is about the care of food. It is of great importance that the community provide for its citizens a safe food supply. For this purpose, all bakeries, groceries, markets, shops, stores, and storage houses should be closely supervised and required to protect food according to sanitary regulations. I love the Red Cross Nursing Manual because it's about so much more than nursing. Um, it's about health and well-being and mental health. I just I really do love it. 1942, that was a really smart time. And of course, we've got the 1960 Audell's DIY Kitchen. This is the Hot Point Kitchen for the Midwest. It's built along two walls with a laundry center next to the sink center. Note the homemaker's corner with a convenient table desk and chair. Don't you love it? I've got some S&H green stamps for you, and that is the last of the S&H green stamps. My mama used to collect these so she could purchase things for her kitchen or purchase Christmas gifts for us and things like that. I really do love that 1960 uh, Audell's DIY book. Lots of fun there. Again, we're thinking about family, family time. This is a photo of a mom and her daughters. Very sweet. Spring is in the air because somebody's flying a kite. I do love these Depression era recipes and stories. This was a remarkable one right here about a woman who was baking. Um, she was baking bread for nine cents a loaf. We were living in Milwaukee, Wisconsin during the Depression and I did baking at home to supplement our income. I got nine cents for a loaf of bread 
and 25 cents for an apple cake. I cleared about $65 a month. At the time, my husband was making $1.25 a day at a friend's farm 125 miles away. One day, I heard a knock on the door, and when I opened it, there stood a man who said he was a state inspector. So she goes on to say that the inspector told her that there were certain rules and regulations about cooking at home and footage of floor space and cleanliness, and then she told him, quite frankly, well, if you take this from me, we will have to go on relief. But the inspector was very understanding and said everything was perfectly sanitary, and she continued her baking for the next two and a half years. So we're hoping that after two and a half years, you know, things were better for this family. I think that the Depression was a, you know, it was a time of incredible industry. I mean, people just got up, man, and started doing and started figuring things out and, you know, how to work and how to make money, just like this woman baking bread. It's just a remarkable time. It was a generation with a lot of pluck and ambition. This is the other part of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the kitchen. Isn't that just beautiful? I just think that is really incredible. So kind of peaceful, isn't it? Coffee and friends, the perfect blend. Share the joy and the grief. Friendship redoubleth joy and cutteth griefs in half. Sir Francis Bacon. I like that. Here is just a little, it's just a paper, y'all, that I uh, I was very fortunate to get coffee cup stamps and cocoa and coffee bean stamps from, uh, from friend Donna. So I thought you guys might like to tear these apart or color them and put them on ATCs or whatever. A piece of packaging for you to play with. More pretty colors and pretty washi tape. Man, I like that washi tape. It just makes me happy all the day long that I use it. <laughs> and now we're getting into a little bit of travel. Are you guys traveling anywhere this year? Are you going anywhere for spring break? Oh my goodness, once my mom and my sister and I and our nieces went to the beach for spring break. Oh my goodness, that was not a good idea, y'all. That did not work out well. We had to move our room several times, so it was just kind of a wild time. But this is a map of the entire United States, so where are you going? I hope that you are getting to go somewhere. The Virginia Museum of Fine Arts is right up the street from us, and I love to go there when I get time. Um, this is a little key envelope for you and a little key to alter since we're, we're talking about travel and hotels and things like that. The Virginia Museum of Fine Arts has a huge exhibition. Well, I say huge. Um, I think they have the largest collection of Fabergé eggs outside of Russia. And I did go there several years ago to see that exhibit, and it was unreal. And now they've like created more onto the exhibit. It's a, it's a bigger exhibit space. This is from Barbersville Vineyards. Um, I don't know. I guess it's in Barbersville, uh, Virginia. I'm not sure. It features an 1804 in and several out parcels. They're just so pretty, y'all, and I knew that you would really enjoy those photos. This is a map of Richmond and the surrounding area. More from the Barberville Winery. Look at that room. Ooh, it's just very elegant, I think. And this is, oh, I couldn't believe it when I ran across this. There you go. There's a peacock in <laughs> the Museum of Appalachia. Now, of course, all of these travel brochures do fold out in their entire brochures, so it's fun to just kind of sit and look at them and see what you can see and maybe places that you'd like to go visit. And each brochure is folded in a fashion that it makes a pocket. But if you want to take the entire brochure out, just take the washi tape off and you've got the whole brochure to, um, you know, to even play with and make some art with. Here's a little bit about West Virginia and the Hampton Roads area of Virginia. Again, the Barbersville Winery. Good gracious, it's just so gorgeous. It's funny how wineries have really been um, 
you know, wineries are now, here's the Fabergé egg exhibit information, are, um, it's like ecotourism, you know, agritourism, where people used to just grow things and um, be on their farms and manage their farms, but now people, tourists come to their farms and kind of check them out and have the experience of being there. I work for a small family farm, and you know, we're into ecotourism. We have school groups that come and visit and that sort of thing. And we have festivals. We have five festivals a year, and they're a lot of fun. And it, it's a very interesting trend, you know, the whole ecotourism, agritourism, um, the touring of breweries and things like that. This is our fashion. Uh, little fashion insert here. I have to read this to you. I love it. This is from the J. Peterman catalog. It says, be tasseled. <laughs> In the 1600s, if you didn't have tassels, you might as well be dead, mon chéri. And not just any old tassels. French tassels made by the French passementiers. Oh yes, you had to have the right tassels in order to clarify your elite status. God forbid a comte be, be confused with a marquisat. I don't know how to go with that. We've left all the bourgeois refineries and kept the tassels in creating something far more flirty and fun than stuffy French nobility. Did you know that? It's like your, um, your status was determined by your tassels. <laughs> I did not know that. Oh, that's a pretty good one right there. Had no idea about that. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get this back in here, y'all. I thought that was so pretty, and you've got a little surprise in the back of this book, so I'll show you that in a minute. Speaking of tassels, this was a beautiful piece, y'all, from a fashion magazine that featured a guy. Look at that. He's an Indian guy, all done up in gold, and you can see his peacock feathers in the back. Um, you know, peacock feathers were used as fashion decor. Very, very pretty. All going up his his tunic here. Gorgeous. A little bit of bling for you. I know this is a Christmas tree, but it's made up of all different kinds of bling, so you can play with that. Tim Holtz vellum, pattern paper, lots of pretty papers. Look, please, because there's something in there for you. Something in that pocket. More pretty papers to play with. And, of course, I put in some tassels for you. Now, I think these are the very fancy tassels, and it means that you are, um, uh, 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 let's see, you're a princess. Uh, nope, you're a queen. You've got these kind of tassels, so you're a queen. There you go. <laughs> I put some more fun fibers in here for you. You've got some sequins and some braiding. The whole thing just looked very Indian-ish, you know, very Middle Eastern. When when I um, when I taught my um, my English as a second language students, they bought me a sari, and I wore it. I wore it quite often. I absolutely loved it. They also bought me Punjabi, which is the the tunic and the pants, and it was just, it's gorgeous, and people will go, why are you wearing that, and I'll go, because I love my children, and I like to wear their ethnic dress, I think it's important, you know, I think it's respectful, and our next signature has a beautiful little dragonfly on it, a chipboard piece that says magic, that I just love, a little piece that says you rule, this is a pack, a uh, pop, pocket full of fun for you. Some painty papers that I made into a bookmark. This is uh, this is the, the pages from The Incredible Journey, and sadly they're gone. They are gold-tinged papers. I don't know if you can see it or not, but they, they are edged in gold, and they're just so pretty. This is the Inspector Poirot book that I love. Uh, it's called... Um, Murder for the Holidays. You know, I love Inspector Poirot. And some Chinese text for you. This is uh, a French dictionary page. 1952, I believe, is this one. A little bit of Hardy Boys for you while the clock ticked. These are the Confessions of Augustine. This is why I love text so much. 
You sit here and you wonder, now who thumbed through these pages? Who read this book? You know, where were they when they were reading the book? Who turned down this corner and why? Why was this meaningful for them? It's so intriguing to think about things like that as you're working with text pages and as you're working with language. Um, we've got a piece of Nielsen ephemera for you, this time from 1957, H.J. Nielsen Flores, Beach Street, Saco, Maine. Of course, we get no zip codes or anything like that. I love the U.S. bond stamp. I think it's beautiful. Like I, I, I've mentioned this several times, these stamps are old and they have no fade to them. We've got some gorgeous Swedish text for you. Oh, sorry. This is, this is, um, yeah, this is, no, this is German. Sorry, y'all. German, Swedish, French, a vintage card. Age takes the starch out of some gauze, it's true. But lucky stiff, you still look good as new. And this, we know, is from Kath. And her husband was Harry Nielsen. And it's dated 1952. Very sweet love things like that. Again, the Confessions of Augustine. You know, who wrote who wrote in the, you know, in the borders of this book? Who made these notes in here? It's very intriguing to me. It, it kind of fires my imagination, and I know that it fires your imagination as well. The back of the book features a little pocket full of posies for you to play with. Make you some spring posies, y'all. Come on, spring. Come on, spring. Come on, spring. Kind of chilly here today, and it snowed a little bit this morning. Um, nothing stuck. You know, we just had some flurries, but it's like, gee whiz, man. No more snow. But, oh, my gosh, my friends in Maine really got pounded. Sorry, Maine. <laughs> and, and my son and his girl in New Jersey um, couldn't get to work a couple of days last week. So, gosh, y'all. It's going to end soon, I promise. This is our little patriotic book. I love the red, white, and blue here. It's just sparkly and fun and lots of um, just very pretty to look at, especially in the sun. The sun was kind of trying to come out when I was working on the spine of this book. And I thought, you know, it'd just be really pretty kind of sitting on a table with the sun shining through these beautiful little beads here. Your closure is four, and that means like the 4th of July. I like everything about this fabric. I love the bird's nest. I love the boat down here. I love the little kids on parade. Um, the It says, United We Stand, God Bless America, red, white, and blue. I love the little bicycle here that has the, uh, has the flag on it. It's just a sweet little book. And we're going to take a look inside. We start with a word pack about family. Tradition, feast, thank Thank you very much, family, mom, dad. And, of course, we have your story here. This is a Take 5 art project that I did, and I made some bookmarks out of what I had left. And this says life. So what's your life story? It's going to be wonderful. It already has been wonderful. Papers to inspire you. A few little calendar items. And we have some birdies here. This time a gray-cheeked thrush. These are stickers from 1996. Aren't they really pretty? Looks like a little robin, I believe, there. A resist item, so you can color that or paint it. Tim Holtz Vellum. I love this piece from a catalog because it is a ferris wheel that's made of twigs. And it's just so pretty, and it's lit with little light. So you, you guys will enjoy that. It's really sweet. A magazine page, and of course a little pocket with things for you to play with inside. It's getting kind of close to Easter, so I thought you might like to have uh, an Easter napkin to do some decoupage with. Another magazine page for inspiration. Here's the other side of the, of the twig ferris wheel. So pretty. A star, because we just got to have stars. Stars and birds. 
top five. What are your top five movies, TV shows, and bands? Hmm. And then you you should try and determine your very favorite. I think that would be a hard decision for me. There's a project, a little, um, oh gosh, these aren't Project Life. What are these called? Smashbook. Smashbook. It says, oh my goodness, that was fun. What, where, when, with whom, what happened? And I put you some Project Life cards right here. This is a double pocket. So you've got, um, you've got pockets here, but you also have a little uh, pocket here with an owl. Love owls some fabric for you, a pocket full of posies, of course. You are my happy. You are my happy. <laughs> and here's a bookmark for you, stars. You know, stars figure very prominently in, um, in, the, in these books because we're talking patriotic, we're talking about the flag, we're talking about the red, white, and blue, that kind of thing. Travel maps for you. Gosh, don't we love to travel? Don't we love to get in the car and just go places? This is a sweet old car. I do not know what it is, y'all. My mama and daddy had a Ford Fairlane, and it was um, Robin's Egg Blue. And I'll never forget that car. I felt very elegant riding in it, and it was just a plain family sedan. I used to ride in the back seat, and I would look out the back window, and I could swear that the moon was following me. It's one of my earliest memories. Why is the moon following me? <laughs> These are travel brochures. This is from the Museum of Appalachia. Let the past touch your soul. The Apple Barn. I think that's in Seaverville, North Carolina. And I'm from North Carolina. And the apples are big in North Carolina. So the travel brochures are just going to kind of fold out for you. And then you've got little things to do in each pocket. Um... This is from Clinton, Tennessee, the town with the most antique stores in the South. Huh, I didn't know that, Clinton, Tennessee. Um, and I love this little mention of Hoskins Drug Store, Soda Fountain, and Gift Shop. Um, when my kids were little, I would take them to the Soda Fountain. It was called Belmont Drug and uh, get them an orangeade and salt and vinegar potato chips. Now, when they were older, they could go down there by themselves after school. And um, we kept a tab down there. So when the kids wanted to go down and get a soda for themselves or their friends, then um, they were at liberty to do that. And it's funny because when we went down there to pay the tab, the tab was on an index card. So you just told the person your kid's name and they pulled out the index card and then you paid the tab. <laughs> That's small town living, y'all. Well, small town living, it's very humble living and wonderful living. Because we just got to have a little scared looking kitty cat. A map of Texas in the Gulf of Mexico. Painty papers for you. These are um, um, like tag board cutouts. They're very, very pretty. Um, this is a bookmark that I made. This is a technique that I like to call, um, I like to call it tie-dyed papers. And I'll show you guys how to do this. You use, you use, um, old photograph paper and, um, you make your own smudging tool and stamp it and stamp something onto it. It's a lot of fun, y'all, and, and we'll do that as a an art tutorial one day soon. Playing cards for you that features a beautiful deer. More things for you to play with, papers to play with, and I love this little smattering of photographs because this is from Cabin Living Magazine, so you can kind of see um, the outlay of a cabin. This, of course, is a very elegant um, living room probably um i would think around 1800 you guys are probably a whole lot better at at timing things than i am but it's just quite lovely and then we have an item from country living magazine that shows an old barn that's been um it's been outfitted to uh as a home and i love things like this uh, Cafe Olay, this is a nice little piece of napkin for you guys to play with. You can decoupage it or do whatever you want. The shortest road to a friend's house. The road is never long. Isn't that truth? 
under all conditions. When you have no helpers, see your helpers in God. When you have many helpers, see God in all your helpers. It's very sweet. But first, the coffee. Yes, we have to have the coffee first. This time of year, we're really thinking about cooking once and serving twice as we have lots and lots of friends and family over for the Easter holidays. We've got our eggless, milkless, butterless cake from the Depression. More recipes for you. I wanted to put more recipes in these books because I just think it's fun. This time it's an Eastern Shore seafood salad. Mmm, that just sounds really good right this minute. Lemon batter fish. And a sm <laughs> You guys are going to think, what is wrong with Tammy? Is she like got food phobia or something? And the truth is, yes, I do. Uh, I am... Um, I have had the sniffles, and my appetite is coming back. So it's like, mmm, mmm. When I was grabbing things for this journal, it was like everything just looked so yummy. Oh, my gosh, everything looks yummy. It's nice to, um, you know, that's the upside to, to having the sniffles is, you know, your appetite kind of goes away. And then, boy, when it comes back, it's like, Oh my gosh, it's like you've never tasted food before. Because you can taste it. This is from the 1960 Audell's DIY Kitchen. This is a, it's a, an illustration of a lady and she's cooking. And it gives the um, maximum reach that she should be able to reach everything and cook everything. It's all about her posture and her reach in the kitchen, which I thought it was very interesting. Um, and of course, the 1942 Red Cross uh, nursing manual is about proper posture. When the body is held erect and in proper balance, all the internal organs are free to do their work, and the processes of respiration, circulation, digestion, and elimination go on without interruption or interference. I can see all of you, like, straightening up right this minute. I just did it myself. I just kind of rearranged myself on my seat here, on my little chair. <laughs> Posture is a smart thing. Posture is good. Doesn't that grapefruit meringue pie look good? Doesn't that buttermilk pie sound delicious? My lord, y'all. Gained 10 pounds. The Great Compromise. Making coffee has become the great compromise of the decade. It's the only thing real men do that doesn't seem to threaten their masculinity. To women, it's on the same domestic entry level as putting the spring back into the toilet tissue roll or taking a chicken out of the freezer to thaw. The amazing and wonderful and gone way too soon, Irma Bombeck. I've got some sweet little stickers of sweets. Doesn't that strawberry look really good? I've got Easter stickers in here for y'all to play with. Tim Holtz Vellum. I love that, that photo of the cowboy and his dog. I just think it's really sweet. And more of that very elegant living room. A sweet little Christmas tree in a cabin. I really do like the sparsity of that. I think it's attractive. Um, a, this is an embossed piece that you can color or paint. Maybe use some markers on. A little piece that says Mother's Storybook and two cards right here. One has ABCs and one says Remember When. This is just a fun smattering of papers. Um, things that we just don't see anymore. Things that are just going the way of the of the dodo. You know, you don't get... I, I've told you guys this at CVS. You know, there's no receipt. They send it to your email. It's like, I just don't like that, man, because I like to keep my receipts. I like to look at them, you know, be sure, be sure you're not overcharged and things like that. And then I like to file them away so I can do my taxes. It, it's just weird, y'all. <laughs> I like a receipt. These are phone call message, um, message things. A check register, you know, we don't have that anymore. Stenographer's paper, a timesheet. This is the um, cross section paper that we've talked about being so pretty around the edges. I, this handwriting is, is magnificent, you know, the way that the numbers are all just beautifully done. And a physical calendar. Do you guys keep a physical calendar? This is from a, a planner that I never used, and it is a little story about prayer. 
uh, name, address, city, and phone. You know what I did the other day, y'all? I um, tried to remember the address of everywhere that I've ever lived from the time I was a child. And that was that's a really good brain exercise, y'all. So maybe you can use this whole thing as just a, you know, exercise your brain. Try to remember all of your addresses. People in history, I kind of like this because it was an old picture of Fidel Castro. And he just looks very debonair, y'all. Really remarkable. Of course, we've got history, we've got science, we've got math. I love these books because they totally rem remind me of being, you know, being a teaching assistant. These are from 1972. I love the papers. I can see you guys doing a whole lot with these. A little bit of steampunk, punk, well, that's hard to say, steampunk paper for you. A top 10 list with the number eight. This is resist, so you can paint it or marker it or do whatever you want to with it. I still keep a physical calendar too. I cannot do that phone thing at all. And a little pocket. This says my Easter basket is filled with thoughts of you. More things to play with. A whole pocket full of, of Easter stickers and uh, quotes and things like that right here. And the Incredible Journey. And we are done with the Incredible Journey. You can see the gold um, on the papers here. I'm never sure if y'all can see that or not. It's very, very pretty. And some English text. Chinese characters, a French dictionary, 1952, um, the Confessions of Augustine, which were written in Latin, but they do have an English translation. Quite lovely. And then we have our um, German, Swedish, and French text. A little bit of Hardy Boys for you as the clock ticked, while the clock ticked. I love this card, y'all. It says, love to my daddy. And his little overalls are flocked. And he's got his little can of worms out here and he's fishing. I suppose all daddies are pretty fine, but I know for sure that the best daddy's mine. And the little fella tried to sign his name for his father for his father's day. And this is 1953. Can just see that you know trying to teach your kids to write especially their name you know and how how proud and accomplished they were when they could write their name and sweet babies i love the writings in the margin of these books and in the back we've got a piece of nielsen ephemera and this time from 1946 with a beautiful purple stamp on it mrs Catherine nielsen beach street Saco, maine I will have these journals in the shop later on this afternoon, y'all. And I've got another batch cooking. Just took them out of the oven. I'm kidding. I don't cook the journals. It's just sometimes it feels like it. <laughs> the process is kind of about the same as cooking something. <laughs> oh, gosh. I hope you guys have a wonderful Saturday. Thank you so much, y'all, for supporting my Etsy shop and for supporting my YouTube channel. I love you guys bunches. Have a wonderful day. Bye.